Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. In just a minute, we're going to see what the old fellows are doing tonight. But on our way down to Pine Ridge, I want to advise you to be sure and send in for one of those handsome aluminum flashlights that Lum and Abner are sending out to all Horlicks malted milk users. Send in your request right away. This powerful, really useful little flashlight will come in mighty handy every day of the year. It would cost you 75 cents if you bought it at the store. But here's how you can get it with the compliments of Lum and Abner. Send in the wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. You may use the wrapper from any size package, but it must be from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. Wrappers from Horlicks tablets are not eligible. Well, write your name and your address on the back of this wrapper and enclose 10 cents, which is only to cover the cost of mailing and packing your flashlight. Then, mail your wrapper and dime to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. Now, that's simple enough, isn't it? And that's all you have to do to get one of these handsome aluminum pocket-sized flashlights, complete with bulb and battery. Send in your request tonight, folks. Lum and Abner want to hear from every single one of their many friends. And I'm sure that those friends will gladly take advantage of this chance to express appreciation of Lum and Abner and their sponsor, the makers of Horlicks. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Yeah, there's been nothing but trouble ever since Lum sent Abner's pictures out to the lady applicants of the Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau. The latest development is that Abner's wife, Elizabeth, thinking that her husband has really been seriously hurt, put in a claim for damages on an accident insurance policy that he had. Well, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the empty store building, which is being used for headquarters for their matrimonial bureau. The old fellows are very much concerned about the predicament in which they now find themselves. Listen. Oh, it just got me worried to death. I don't know what to do. Well, Abner, you can't go ahead and collect damages from the insurance company when you weren't even in no automobile accident. Well, what am I going to tell them? That judgment feller's supposed to be out here tomorrow to settle it. I don't know, but I know if you go ahead and collect damages from them, it's uh, obtaining false money under pretenses. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, me. How come Elizabeth to call up the insurance company in the first place? Why, she just happened to run across that accident party over at the house yesterday, so she just telephoned them right up and told them that I'd been hurt, had both arms broke, and wanted a settlement. Hmm. She thought that I'd forgot about having a policy. Maybe we could just explain to that just men fella that you weren't sure enough hurt and ask him not to tell Elizabeth nothing about it. Yeah, but she'd find out something was wrong, Lom. They never paid me something. Two broke arms, why, they'd have to give me something. And she'd just about go in there and tear the place up if they never paid me nothing, and then they'd have to tell her. Hmm. Well, Granny, this is getting more complicated all the time. Can't tell Elizabeth now. Oh, no, I'd rather go to the penitentiary and have her find out that that accident of mine was a fake. Oh, yeah. Looks like you can get yourself into more trouble than any one human I ever seen. I spend half my time getting you out of scrapes. Well, if I never followed your advice, I wouldn't get him in the first place. This whole business started when you sent them pictures of me out to women that rode into the matrimony bureau for a husband. Well, I never had no idea that one woman was going to fall in love with your picture and come down here to see you, though. Well, I never neither, but she did. And then when Elizabeth found out about it and got so mad, why... It was your idea for me to make out like I'd been in an accident and got both arms broke, too. That's right. Blame me with the whole thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's appreciation for you. And you were the one that talked me into buying that insurance policy, too, Lum Edwards. Said I ought to have it on account of my wife. If you hadn't have said that, why, I wouldn't have bought it. Just wanted to protect her. Protect her? Yes, sir. I told you you ought to have it on account of your wife, but I meant to protect yourself, not her. When she gets on one of them tantrums of her, you ought to have cyclone, tornado, and every other kind of insurance you can get. Yeah, and if she finds out that my arms ain't sure enough broke, well, I'll need more than that. Yeah. That accident policy may come in pretty handy after all. Well, I ain't gonna <laughs> let Elizabeth know about it. Don't you worry about that, Mom. Well, I don't want you to. No, sir. She about found out it was my idea in the first place, and we'd both be into it. Ain't that Dick Huddleston coming up out there? Huh? Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's turning in here. Too. Well, I don't know what to tell you to do about this, Abner, just offhand, but we got to study up something before that adjustment fella comes out here. I know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Just hold that on now. Don't talk about it none while Dick's in here. Well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, come in, Dick. Howdy, howdy. I got some more mail for you here. Well, good. Folks writing in for the flashlight already. Yeah. I'm anxious to see who they're voting for for president. Yeah. <laughs> anxious to see what? Who they're voting for for president, me or Long? You must not have heard our announcement on the party line yesterday, Dick. I know. I reckon not, Long. Well, see, me and Abner got in a sort of an argument here yesterday about which one of us is going to be president of our jot em down store when we get it opened up again. So <laughs> we just decided to let the folks out on the party line do the election. Yeah, uh, we told them that when they sent in for these flashlights that we're giving away that uh, they could just write on the back of the ropper which one of us that they wanted to have off. Yeah. Well, won't that sort of complicate matters? Oh, no, no. They have to write their name and address on the back of the ropper anyhow. Won't be no trouble to write mine or Abner's name on there, too. <laughs> what if they don't want either one of you to hold the office? <laughs> well, they don't have to vote on it. Oh, no. It don't make no difference to them. They don't have to say one way or the other. No. It ain't got nothing to do with us giving away the flashlight. Just a sort of a contest, me and Abner's running on the side fixed ourselves. Yeah. Well, that's a fair way to decide on which one of you to be the president, all right. <laughs> you fellas usually have a little argument about it. Yeah, well, we figured this would illuminate all that. Yeah, uh, this will be the first time that I've ever been president, as long as we've been in business. Well, wait a minute. Huh? Don't start that. You ain't elected <laughs> yet. Uh, see, I'm just doing this to prove to Abner that it ain't only me that thinks I'm the best qualified for the office. <laughs> well, now, I don't want to get mixed up in this at all, fellas. I'm anxious to see, though, which one of you gets the most votes. <laughs> well... I figure I'll be elected about three to one. Sassy. Sassy. There may be a few folks that'll vote for Abner. Don't know no better. Yeah, well, now, let's just look at a little of this mail that come in today and see how it's wrong. Yeah, Granny, I'll just show you. Well, I better get on back store, fellas. I just run over with this mail. I figured you fellas wanted it as soon as you get it. Yeah, well, that's mighty thought of you, Dick, and we appreciate it. Yeah, much obliged, Dick. Yeah, so long. So long. Now, before we look at these, Abner, I want to warn you not to be disappointed when you open them up and they're all voting for me. I don't want you to have no hard feelings uh, over me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that in there. Abner, first one. <laughs> huh? Oh, but all this in here says Abner, too. Yeah. Must be some of your relations writing in. Well, I do know. Well, here's two more from Elon. <laughs> look at that. Well, I'll be that bland. Don't reckon they got our names mixed up. Here's another one for you. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Here's one for you, huh? Well, good. <laughs> There's somebody that knows a president when they see one. I reckon all yours just happen to be on top there. <laughs> I know Well, the no there. wonder. Look there. Look who sent it in. Who was it? Law Matters, Pine Ridge. Oh. D- did I vote for myself on there? Yeah, you vote Law Matters for president across there. Well, I was trying to. Uh, just force a habit, I reckon. Uh, that is, writing my name. I don't mean voting for myself. I aim to vote for you, Abner, just to be sure that you got one vote. Yeah. <laughs> well, good, good. Uh, here, you can just change it, Law just rub your name out there and then write mine in. Well, I don't think you're allowed to do that, though, Abner. Huh? I don't think you're allowed to change the votes after they've been sent in that way. Hey. Oh, we get to doing that, no telling where we'd wind up at. I dog it here's two more for me, Lum. Look there. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> for the land's sake. Granny, something's wrong here somewhere. Can't figure this out. Let me read that. Dear Abner. Yeah. Oh, I put a note on there to you. Yeah. <laughs> I am voting for you for a president because you have both arms broken, and I feel sorry for you. Well, bless her heart. Bless her little heart. Listen here, said this might lie the same thing too long. Well, uh, and looky there, there's another one voting for you, just on account of your arms being broken. Well. <laughs> yeah, I see now. Yeah, that's the reason. Uh-huh. Just on account of them feeling sorry for you. You done that yesterday when you told them out on the party line that you had both your arms broke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a good idea. Well, well, I'm glad I put that in there. Well, it ain't fair. It's cheating. <laughs> Your arms ain't broken, you know it. Uh-huh. You're just peeling to their sympathy. And grannies, I'll put a stop to that right now. Yeah, what are you fixing to do now, Lon? Wait a minute mind, there. Never huh? mind. Well, recollect now, you said that we weren't going to have no mud slinging now, I Lon. ain't going to sling no mud. I'm just going to straighten out a misunderstanding here. The very idea you telling everybody yesterday that you was pitiful. I order just took it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hope you're listening. Be careful what you say now. Howdy, everybody. Uh, this is Lum Edwards talking. <laughs> I've uh, got a little announcement to make about me and Abner running for president. I sure got his vote that time. Uh, a lot of you folks has voted for Abner because you felt sorry for him. Yeah. Well, I just want to tell you that there ain't a thing in the world to that story about his arms being broke. Well, Dad, blame you. His arms ain't no more broke than mine is. We just made that story up to fool his wife. Uh, I've always been president of the Jot 'em Down store, and I'm about the only one in the company that knows anything about running it. And I That's just crazy. want to remind you that when you're making up your mind which one of us to vote for, just 
figure out which one of us is the best qualified for the office and vote for me. All right, thank you. Now, Granny, that ought to hold you. I'd be shamed to death if I was you, Long. Claiming your arms were broke just to get votes. Of all the unfair methods, you I... You get mad because everybody's voting for me. That's the whole trouble, Long Edwards, and you know it. Well, I put a stop to it, I know that. <laughs> I'll bet you don't get a vote tomorrow. Can't blame your ornery hide. <laughs> They'll see what uh, underhanded method you've been using, and they'll ever one turn again. Yeah, I think that's our ring there, Don. Yeah. <laughs> More than likely somebody called me up, thank me for exposing you. Honest <laughs> thing I ever heard of. Hello? Oh, this is Lum Edwards talking. I hope they bore him out. Who? Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Huh? Uh, yeah, but, uh, well, yeah, that was just a joke. I... What's that? Well, I never meant... Yeah, uh, well, here, 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 you talk to him about it. Here, get up here, Evan. Who is it? It's your wife, Elizabeth. She was listening on the party line a while ago and heard me tell everybody that your arms ain't sure enough rope. And she's just a burning that telephone up. <laughs> well, it looks like Lumma's bungled things now, sure enough. Perhaps some of you haven't sent in for a flashlight because you already have one in your house. Well, if I were you, I'd send in and get one of these little fountain pen size flashlights, too. These are such handy things, about the size of a fountain pen, you know and easy to carry around in a coat or vest pocket. For all their compactness, though, these little flashlights are amazingly powerful, really serviceable. It's the same kind of flashlight that costs 75 cents in the stores. But here's how you can get one with the compliments of Lum and Abner. Send in the wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. Now, your wrapper may be from any size package, but it must be from a Horlicks malted milk powder package. Wrappers, I mean, from Horlicks tablets are not eligible. Write your name and your address on the back of the wrapper and enclose 10 cents to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight. Then, mail your wrapper with your name and address and the dime to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. Now, isn't that an easy way to get a fine aluminum pocket-sized flashlight complete with bulb and battery? Send in for a flashlight tonight, folks. Don't put it off until it's too late. If you don't have a package of Horlicks malted milk in your home now... You can get it in either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health.